What's good everyone, Marcus here, and today we're looking at the Rogue 26 or Wagon Wheels and what they can add to your home gym. Now I've always recognized my lower back as a weak point and knowing that I try to focus on improving that weakness with some posterior chain work. So originally I began looking at these wagon wheels when I was still struggling with my deadlift form last summer. At my height of 6'2", it sometimes felt awkward and tough on my lower back as I started to climb up in weight and I knew I had to really nail down my form. Add to that the painful memory of a previous lower back injury from deadlifting several years ago that I was trying to avoid repeating. Ideally, to strengthen my back, I needed to have deadlifts and block pulls in my training regimen, but I had to approach carefully. I have long femurs and I was prone to round my back when I began deadlifting in 2018. Rack pulls were more comfortable for me, so the thought of larger wagon wheels to pull from the floor seemed like a reasonable solution. The problem was that these were really hard to come by and were out of stock for quite some time. On the off chance that they were back in stock, you had to be quick on the trigger to grab a pair. And on several occasions, I missed out with slow reaction time to the restock notice. Well, last month I finally snatched up a pair and have been using them once or twice a week and I now feel comfortable sharing my experience with them. Now these are the bumper plate style wagon wheels not to be confused with the metal wagon wheels of the same diameter. The other difference is the weight where the standard metal wagon wheels are 45 pounds. These bumpers are 70 pounds each. Now the interesting thing is these are made out of recycled rubber but they have such a refined and smooth texture to them. The quality is very high as you would expect from Rogue and they're just truly huge plates in every way. As I said in my preview video on these, it's hard to imagine the size of them. Once you have them in your possession, it's a little overwhelming to be honest. My space is relatively small here and they truly seemed out of place initially, but not after using them for the last several weeks. So let's talk specs. As implied by the name, these are 26 inch in diameter, so they are roughly 9 inch larger in diameter than standard bumper plates. Split that 9 inches in half and you effectively raise your bar from the floor about 4.5 inches higher than with standard plates. This effectively mimics a block pull and for me at my height it just feels really great and natural compared with pulling standard plates from the floor. But that advantage isn't just for taller individuals like myself as the partial range of motion can help anyone who's looking to work on their lockout. Now besides the diameter, the other spec provided is just under 4 inches in width, but that's not accurate. I'm not sure why Rogue has this spec off, but I was prepared for a very wide plate at 4 inches or so and in actuality they are about 2 and 3 quarter inches in width at their widest point. Regardless of the width, these are really easy to grab and handle, whether using the full width of the plate or the recessed handle areas. I try not to lift them more than I have to and I just roll them around NASCAR style to and from the bar or the wall that I lean them up against, but they could probably help in training grip strength too. Now the last meaningful spec I've already mentioned and that's the weight of each plate at 70 pounds. That's the interesting bit for me as I wasn't interested in the standard wagon wheel weight at 45 pounds. I see more size and I just expect more weight, but that's just me. Personally, I also feel a rubber bumper style plate is ideal for this application. I've seen some images of bent wagon wheels with flat spots from heavy drops and it just makes more sense to use rubber. That also factors into the practicality for us home gym users who don't want to annoy family members with the loud banging of metal plates. Yes, I know about stall mats and I have some here and I know about deadlift platforms too. Even with those options to mitigate the loud crashing of metal plates, it can still be pretty loud. In fact, these aren't that silent either due to the metal hub clanging on the barbell sleeves each time they're placed back down on the floor. It's not a big deal though and I'm certain it's still quieter than metal plates. But getting back to the weight of 70 pounds per plate is an important factor to note and that it can make lifts challenging because typically the starting weight ends up being 185 pounds with just a pair of wheels and a standard barbell. That could be outside the range for some lifters on some lifts. For me, I still start my deadlift warm ups with 25 pound bumpers and work my way up to these before adding on additional plates. However, to use them for pendulum rows as I intend, it's honestly too heavy for me at this time. Perhaps one day I'll get there. But for now, I found a workaround by using these plates with my Easy Curl Bar, which is a hair under 20 pounds. That makes the total weight 160 pounds. For hip thrusters, on the other hand, this weight is easily manageable, and for me, it's actually under what I typically use at 225 pounds and above. However, the diameter of the plate makes it a lot easier maneuverability-wise in getting in and under the bar with hip thrusters. That was another area that I struggled with at my size and ended up starting and ending the exercise from the spotter arms. These wagon wheels now allow me to start and end from the floor, which is much easier and safer. So how have they been for actual use? For every use I've incorporated so far, they have been truly fantastic. With deadlift, they make the starting point so much more comfortable at my height. I will note that in my programming where I'm typically doing deads twice a week, one session incorporates pause, so I go back to using standard plates for those. The reason being is that the method is to try and strengthen your pull from the ground and starting at a higher point with these wheels will place the bar at a higher level defeating that purpose. However, by having one of my two weekly sessions using the wagon wheels, it spares my lower back from the unnecessary repetitive string. And for me, 
that is a true blessing. Even though my deadlifts have gone extremely well since the start of this year, I have experienced quite a lot of fatigue in the process, and at my age, I have to be smart with my training. As for the feel of the plates during lifts, there isn't much difference from standard plates, but I will note that I can feel the bottom of the plate sliding sideways on the initial lift with heavier loads as the bar bends on the initial pull. This was a little awkward and almost distracting, but I'm getting used to it. For pendlay rows, it is also easy for me to start and stop the sets because the bar is higher off the ground. Previously, my start position was from the start arms. I would walk the bar out, do my repetitions, walk the bar back and place it back on the spot arms. Now, with the height of the wagon wheels, this creates an easier position for the starting and ending point. For hip thrusters, this is just so much easier than with standard plates and that exercise is no longer a pain in the ass to do. Now I actually enjoy the hip thrusters due to the ease of positioning. Now we'll note that the extra diameter of the plate comes into contact with the floor sooner, so that could limit range of motion for some smaller lifters. You could incorporate an ab mat or something similar to get your shoulder blades higher off the ground, allowing you to get to the bottom position without the plates resting on the floor though. Lastly, let me talk about the ease of use. The extra diameter makes loading and unloading additional plates a breeze. It's like the plates are their own deadlift jack, negating the need for a deadlift jack when using these plates. Now when using these, I load them up on my spotter arms to start and then load additional plates from the floor. Super easy and convenient. All in all, this is another piece of equipment that I'm very happy with and glad I've added them to my gym. Now you may have noticed I have not discussed price yet and that is for good reason. These are not cheap, but not ridiculous either. Let's place an asterisk there, however. You have to consider the cost of shipping of 140 pounds compared with a standard pair of plates at perhaps 90 pounds. From Ohio to Eastern Pennsylvania, shipping cost me just over $69. At the time, the plates cost $265 and $20 tax, but the total roughly at $350. That's not cheap for a pair of plates, but they're a lot less expensive than the 45 pound metal wagon wheels. Unfortunately though, Rogue has since raised the price to $320 before tax and shipping, an increase of $55. So my new total would be somewhere around $413 if I were to purchase them today. Trust me, I understand if that number is off-putting, and I probably would not have purchased them myself at that price. I think the price increase is unfortunate, but I still love these plates, and I'm really glad that I got them when I did. Anyway, that's my take on these Goliath 26ers from Rogue. As always, I appreciate you stopping by to watch my videos. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one.